We have a beautiful red laptop by Lenovo here. It's a Flex 2-14 IDEA pad. It looks quite perfect, except for some damage next to the touchpad, so it might have taken a hit. But then you would expect the damage to dent to the inside of the laptop, and here it's more like bulging to the outside. So this might be an expanded battery. Let's open it up before applying power. If it is a broken battery, we might not want to put any voltage on the laptop. When disassembling a laptop, I like to make a rough sketch and stick any loose parts I remove to the drawing and number them sequentially. It makes it a lot easier to reassemble and we will put all the parts back exactly where they belong. An additional advantage is that small parts will not be able to play hide and seek with us by hiding under larger parts, which often seems to be their idea of fun. So no exploded battery here, it is the hard disk that is directly behind that crack. Since the hard disk or its connection might have been damaged, let's remove it and see if that makes a difference. Look at that, without the hard disk the laptop does start, so maybe the hard disk connector got damaged at impact. A general examination of the board does not show any bird components or cracks, so let's look at the hard disk connector a little bit more in detail. Let's see if some of the pins are connected that shouldn't be connected. Some pins are connected, but that turns out to be normal when we look at the pinout of the SATA connector. There's really nothing obvious wrong with the motherboard around the SATA connector. Since laptops can behave quite strange when the CMOS battery is empty, let's change it. Well, when there is no CMOS battery, the laptop starts. When we put in the battery, it starts the first time, but not when we remove the charger and try to start the laptop again. So this might be a BIOS problem. Let's update the BIOS. Second time. It does it. I made a bootable high rents boot USB using Rufus, then I put the BIOS update file from the Lenovo site on a separate USB stick. If you would like a video explaining the creation of a boot USB, please leave it in the comments below. You'll probably figure it out using the links below for now. After booting the Hirens boot USB, we are able to run the BIOS update file, which we downloaded from Lenovo support. But an additional problem here is that the original update executable will not do the update if the battery level is below 30%. Our battery is 0%, so we have to find a way around that. Buying a new battery just to update the BIOS is ridiculous. When we look at the files that are created after running the BIOS update executable, we see that there is a winflash64.bat batch file containing a call to the actual flash executable. The cbp flag used in the command is the battery check. 
If we remove this flag, it will update the BIOS without being restricted by the battery being empty. Since I already did this without recording it, it gives us the message that we have the latest BIOS version already. So we did succeed in updating the BIOS. After installing the BIOS update, the hard disk spins up every time we start the laptop, even with the CMOS battery installed. So let's install Mint Linux. We do this by using Rufus to write a bootable USB from the Mint Linux ISO file and following the instructions after booting from the USB. So in the end it was just the BIOS that needed a refresh and we managed to do that by editing the batch file created by the BIOS update executable from Lenovo. Great! We saved a beautiful laptop from the scrap heap. Thank you so much for joining me in this little adventure. Please like and subscribe and I hope you will join me in the next video. Bye then!